Well, hello and welcome back to Castlegoat and to Nomoria and to the remains of a rather bloody battle with a bunch of goblins. We've also had a bloody battle with a bunch of mans and we have also begun work on the entryway to Castlegoat, the gatehouse of the future. There is going to be a lot of work involved in this, so uh, just getting down the uh, footprint of the building was the first step. I've also popped a few torches outside just to spread around a, bit, a little bit of extra light. Now, the fight, we're going to have to clean this up. It was actually rather brutal in that we lost... Actually, I'm going to let these doors be built first, and then I'll clean up all of the uh, bits and bobs there, just in case the clean command messes with the doors. But uh, we lost two pieces of armour. Firstly, Lizzie lost her steel breastplate, and I'm very concerned about that. For the time being, I am so concerned that I have told Adsto, under uniforms, let me just find his uniform, guard captain, to only use a bronze breastplate to ensure that the next breastplate that's made goes to Lizzie. And actually, on that note, I should probably... Hmm, let me just cut all of these back. We only want four, four, four and four and two there we go that should ensure that a, a steel brass plate is made next and then i'll put all of those back up to the correct amount now the other piece of arm that we lost lizzie got away with just some some bruising and injuring to her upper body nothing life-threatening no bleeding or anything like that the the battle followed her back to uh, where she got her new piece of armor but uh, the other one with his small Vic, and he actually came off quite a lot more worse for wear. Apparently when Lizzie decided to move, a two-headed ogre turned to him and punched him in the chest so hard that it almost ki killed him. He found it very, very hard to get over there and get a bandage, but he did, so uh, all is well. But the bare leather tunic that he had is now gone. That is a shame. Oh, Nelsendorf, where are you? My lord. Really? Okay, well, that's, that's fine. Now, are there any gnome arms? Because the battles are now getting so crazy, it's really hard to follow whether someone's getting wounded or not. I think all the doors are made. Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll assign the clean command, and this should uh, also clean up any stray limbs. And that includes gnomish stray limbs. I sincerely hope that there are none. But uh, I, I don't think there are. I, I probably would have noticed it as... More than one person with a missing arm walked back away from the fight, but uh, it's always best to be cautious when it comes to things like that. Now, as for everything else, things are progressing all right. The fields finally uh, came into bloom. Oh, well, bloom. The crops were ready to be harvested, the, the wheat that used to be here and the strawberries that used to be there, and they have now been replanted. Now, is that a wheat seed? I hope you've actually replanted grape fields. Hmm. Not sure you have. That's a little bit of a concern. Now the question is, do they just replant what they had before? It doesn't look like it because they haven't replanted everything there. Hmm. Let me just check this. Crops ready. Till plots. Seeds planted 63. Well, we've definitely got more wheat seeds than that, so why aren't they being planted, I wonder? I think perhaps because we planted it over crops that already existed, it's caused a little bit of shenanigans to go on. But I'm going to leave that for now. Oh, is that... Are you going to plant something there? I think you might be. Yes, he is. Ah, oh, fantastic. Who is it? It's me, of course. I'm awesome. And I also really, really care about having food. Perhaps a little too much. Though, running like that, I guess I would be forgiven even if I did. Wouldn't matter as long as I'm that fast. Right. Now, as for our animals, we are starting to get some more straw in, but on the whole, our pastures are fine. There's plenty of stockpiled food for both the alpacas and the yaks, though the alpacas come off a little bit worse. The emus are doing perfectly fine, thanks to the continuous harvesting of mushrooms all the way through winter. And I have gone ahead and suspended the... Ooh, have we got them yet? No. The leather worker, so that uh, the wool string and padding and other bits of wool that are needed for these beds will finally be made, but we are still waiting on them. Uh, let's check this out. Uh, let's go to stock and take stock of our inventory. What I would like to know is cloth. Where are you, cloth? Uh, well, actually, I suppose I could have a look at it all. We've got 145, but it's all wool. 
One bolt of cloth, it's a cotton bolt. 272 bandages, that's fine. Zero mattresses and 32 string. Well, we need 32 wool string to do anything, so uh, that's probably what's holding us up. If I look at mattress, it requires string, straw, and a bolt of cloth. The wool mattresses will almost certainly be made with wool cloth and wool string, so it's the string that's holding us up, but that won't take very long. Now, we have another silver statue to place as well. Let's uh, get that placed now. Let's see how this affects. Uh, actually, it won't affect it too much, so I won't bother rechecking the value, but... We'll get that built in there. We've got many, many more silver statues to go. My goodness, we've got another 12 silver statues. Ye gads. That's a little bit more than I expected. Or, well, I guess we could make those platinum statues at the back there, but 12 silver statues at the very least. So, let's uh, set those up. 12 silver statues. There we go. Right, now, I guess you're all wondering what... I'm going to be doing with the gatehouse. I'll talk you through it, even though it's going to take us a little while to go. This is the lower level, and it's big enough for us to have some uh, statues and some nice tiling on the floor leading to this door. This will be a double door. There will not be any traps on this level. This will be the normal way through, and this will be protected by a mechanical wall setup. That will close or, well, hopefully we'll be able to close it in time when we notice there are enemies. That will force the enemies to have to come up here. I've left this little uh, bit of land here. That's going to be a bridge. I'll probably have it tiled differently eventually, but for now it'll just remain as dirt. And they'll come through on this level. There will be a trap system here, which will, generally speaking, force them into a position where they will either get crushed or fall into a pit. Hopefully most of them will fall into a pit. I, I'm still not entirely settled on the way I'm going to set up the mechanics for this, so it could end up being a non-lethal trap in that the only outcome is that they'll fall into a pit. The pit will be down here. Now, what is still up for debate is whether I turn this area into some sort of shooting gallery, and then I just wait for all of the enemies to be stock, uh, to stockpiled. Well, yeah, I guess. Oh my goodness, you invented the flintlock pistol? Rick, you marvellous man. Fantastic. I'll have a proper look at that in a moment. I'm not, I don't know how much a flintlock pistol would require to make, but uh, that is definitely a possibility for the, the militia captains. Right, so uh, we'd either have like a shooting gallery, and we'll wait for everyone to get stocked in the uh, killing area down here, and then just assign our archers, or blunderbuss ears, or whatever, musketmen, to kill all of the people down there, so they get the, the training of actually firing on them. The alternative is to have this dump down two levels. Now, that may hurt them a little bit. I don't think it would kill them. I don't even know if it'll do that much damage, honestly. But then have a path that they would have to follow, which would lead out somewhere up here, somewhere on, on the side. So they, they, they'd come back out. They'd have a clear path all the way back to try again. And so in doing that, they would come down this hill, constantly under fire from the archers or musketmen on top of the, the, the guard tower, and just rinse and repeat. Keep doing that, constantly getting attacked. I'm not really sure where we're gonna do that. I, there's a little part of me that feels that it's rather unsportsmanlike to give them no chance of success. I, it doesn't sit well with me. My honor is getting in the way of my efficiency. I'm gonna have to have words with my honor and see whether we can come to so, some sort of arrangement with the trap system. But that is the plan for the moment, so, the first thing we're going to need is plenty of windmills, because this is going to take an obnoxious amount of power. There's going to be at least two mechanical doors here, probably one mechanical door up here, and, well, actually, possibly two mechanical doors, maybe even more. At least one trap, various pressure plates, levers, axles, lots of axles, because it's going to have to transmit power. The lever that's going to control all of this is going to be on top with the arches. So the power is going to come up to here, hit the lever, and then be distributed to the rest of the trap system. So I'm going to have to have loads of axles moving this power around. And that's going to be very costly. So we need to have a look at what it costs to make a power source, a windmill. We are going to require one mechanical base, one rod, and four windmill blades. Uh, based on what we had in Spider Slaughter, that didn't actually use much in the way of axles and uh, mechanical walls and yet that required about six windmills so I'm gonna say 
We're probably going to need 10, maybe a little bit more. And if that's more than we need, well, that just means we've got spare power for later on when we, we might want something else, like a pump. So we're going to need 10 mechanical bases. That requires two gears, one spring. We should have plenty. Bronze gears, bronze springs. We'll go ahead and tell them to make 10. That will be all we'll need for the windmills. We'll need the blades as well. Let me see. Where can I make the windmill blades? Where would one make the windmill blades? Would they be here also? Blade trap, mechanical... Ah, windmill blades. Now, we're going to need 40 of these. My lord. You know what? Instead of doing it this way, because it's going to take a lot, I'll just have it craft too. Uh, windmill blades. That requires any plank. Uh, let's make it of a nice bright colour. A birch plank. And we can pretend that... Uh, I, actually, I think the sails are always white, but we'll use a, a birch plank for it. And a bolt. Hmm. Well, we are going to have cotton soon, so I'm going to go ahead and say use cotton for that, and we'll also make them up to 10. And we're going to need some rods as well, and that I believe we make here. We should need two rods of any bars. I don't think this one matters. I don't think this has any functional difference on what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and say make it of copper, because that, uh, we've got quite a lot of copper. We're still mining it at the moment. And I would like at least 10 of those kept. So there we go. That will allow us to make all of the windmills. I've still got to pick a place for it. Now, one idea is to put them all on top of the guardhouse. And if the guardhouse is big enough, well, that would make sense. I mean, if it is going to be this whole structure, and as I said, I did have a, an idea of having the, the, the tower kind of like a cutout so that the... the down here is, is clear and, and spacious, but then uh, it actually has the overhang up there. But uh, I'm going to have to think of how I'm going to support that. Not that I really need to, you understand, but how I'm going to make it look like I am. That is still a question, because I don't think this is going to work for such a large overhang. It would look really odd. Ah, there we go. They have actually planted all the grape fields. Fantastic. Now, hopefully... Ah, there we go. Cotton as well. Ah, things are going well. Now, how are the... Fences going. Fences seem to be doing all right. Let's go ahead and continue to build the fences. So we want actually, what type of wood is this? Birch rail fence. Okay. Where are you? Build furniture. There we go. And we would like it made out of birch. Birch is going to be a popular wood for a little while. Ah, birch. And where am I going to put the entrance? Ah, I'll put the entrance here somewhere. For now, let's continue drawing these out. Connect that up there. And also up there. Fantastic. Right, for now, I think I'm going to pause the recording whilst I let some time pass and puzzle over the logistics of where I'm going to be putting the axles and the gearboxes that are going to have to transfer all of this power from up top, wherever I decide up top is. Bearing in mind that ranged um, combatants shoot at 45 degree angles down. So for every um, layer up I go, it's an extra layer out that they won't be able to hit from the bottom of the wall. So for example, um, if we said that they were just shooting from here, 45 degree angle, I think they wouldn't be able to shoot this tile along the edge. If we were on top of this wall, which is two tiles up, they wouldn't be able to shoot those two tiles. So there would be this tile. So that also has to factor in. So I may possibly have them fairly low down, but it has to be at least this tall to allow for the entryway over here so that they're above that. Hmm. That is going to have to factor in. Perhaps I could use some sort of... Maybe I could uh, force... Have a wall or something, or the, or the only ramp up... Well, actually, the only ramp up is already there, so... We know that if they wanted to get back up onto this side, from this side, which is where I would probably empty them out after they've gone through all the windy tunnels, they would have to be at least this far out in order to get up onto the ramp. That might actually work in our favour. But yes, I'm going to pause the recording and I shall see you in a few moments, I hope. 
And welcome back to a couple of traders having arrived. We've actually had another one as well from Love Slave, but I, I, there wasn't too much there for trade. Just a couple of little bits and bobs, some copper, some tin. I traded for that off screen. But I brought you back specifically because one of these traders has an abnormally large selection of goods, or rather value. I've also already had a look at this one. We're going to be buying all the wool and cotton, and this is what we're going to be selling for it. Uh, someone in the comments did mention that uh, seeing me trading four or five times in an episode was growing a little tedious, and I do appreciate that. So what I'll be trying to do is just look through the screens off camera, select what I'm going to buy, and then just let you have a look at what we're giving away in order to uh, gain what we're buying. So uh, that's actually a fairly good trade, in my opinion. Now, the uh, thing I wanted to show you, though, is the crazy value of ores that are available here let's uh, find where are they all right down here 39 iron valid at 120 each 30 copper at 30 35 malachite at 30 39 tin at 30 4 silver and some gold now gold is not something that we often see but look at that 8700 gnome bucks worth of, of trade goods there we have not even remotely got enough because I've, I've spent like two grand on the love slave trader. And that was pretty much all of our bone statuettes. So <laughs> we're not going to be getting any of those. Unfortunately, something else I've also noticed. Because uh, when I realized we really didn't have much in the way of trade goods, I checked out our, our gems. Alas, yeah, we don't have any gems anymore. A uh, bit of a bad time, really. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually... Um, you know what, since we've got tin and we're not actually going to be using it too much since... Well, we will be using it, actually. We'll go for copper as well here, and I'll just uh, tell you to craft up the 32 copper rings. In fact, I think I'll increase this to 32 as well. If we've got it, we want it made. But our statues are coming along. Really, what I want is just to keep increasing the skill that they're going to be using there. Um, simply because if we don't... We're not going to be getting as much money out of the gems when we've got them as we could. Now, has that been removed? One of them should have been removed. Yes, that one. Fantastic. Really? Are those both facing the wrong way? Hmm. All right, let's uh, go ahead and build the silver statue that we've just made. Which is fantastic. Oh, actually, we've got two. Doubly fantastic. Right, we'll get rid of this one then as well. Let's go ahead and chop that down now. Let's have a look at, has Alex Slay's abilities improved at all? Got two silver statues. One of them, the one that uh, I placed the last time you saw, was actually a normal one. Yeah, oh no, that's poor. Damn it, Alex Slayer. Why are you going back? Oh, both of them. I expected more of you. But expecting is not going to make your skills go up. Crafting will make your skills go up. And thus, I would be happy if you would return to making uh, copper statuettes. Especially because then I could trade them. Right, let's get the other one built as well. I mean, okay, they're not as good as they could be. But still, 1,170 is... Uh, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth with that. In the mouth, I mean to say, my lord. I've been tripping over my words something chronic lately. I put it down to being sick. Which I still am, kind of, but I'm feeling much better for those who have uh, expressed concern. Thank you very much for getting in touch and checking on me. But I am alright, it's just a sore throat. Just uh, rather unfortunate that Let's Play requires that, you know, I not have one of those. Anything else I could deal with, more or less. I probably wouldn't be happy about dealing with it and recording, but uh, a sore throat really does kind of put a damper on Let's Play. But uh, let's see, we still have a couple of basalt statues I could flog off, but I'm not really sure that I want to. Those will come in handy at some point, I'm sure of it. We are still waiting on things being made. I've actually paused the armor smith and the leather um, armor in hopes that we will finally actually start making these bloody mattresses. Once we've got those four, uh, those five, I want four over here as well, so... It's going to be a little while before we get back to making armor, but Lizzie is fully equipped now, which I'm very happy about. And Ash still actually has a fair bit of steel on him. Uh, one steel pauldron, two steel gauntlets, one steel boot. It's not too bad. The idle chopper. Fantastic. But uh, it will be improving over time. 
Now, how many more bronze hammers have we got? Let's actually check on stocks. It's been a little while. Right, we want to go to weapons, we want melee, and we don't want any of the stone weapons. Okay, we've got three bronze hand axes, seven bronze hammers, and four shields. We need a lot of more of both of these. It's going to be a very long time before we can reliably equip our militia, I feel. <laughs> However, what I could do, if we look at uniforms, we have far less militia captains. We could tell them to go ahead and equip a hammer. Yeah, go ahead and equip any type of hammer. And, no, we'll leave it on stone axe until we've actually got enough axes there. Uh, but that will actually be pretty good. In fact, I'm very tempted to go ahead and push the axes up to 40. And we'll just push them up slightly in priority so that we can at least have our militia captains equipped with bronze weapons. That should really, really help with the damage output. A couple of people have mentioned that uh, they're a little bit concerned about that, but uh, I think we should be okay. The amount of damage that our entire fort would be able to do with bronze weapons as opposed to stone weapons, I think that will mitigate the increase in enemy strength that we'll see from the uh, Risen Kingdom Worth. On that note, Kingdom Worth is at uh, 252,000. It's not too bad. It's climbing slowly. Much slower than I really expected. Another thing I noticed, though, and what you can see going on there as a crazy hive of activity, we have a phenomenal amount of slivers. My goodness, I had no idea. I'm actually going to show you this because when I realized just how many metal slivers we had, I... I actually face palmed. I We've been here waiting on steel all this time. We've actually gone down in steel slivers because that's now a really high priority. There were about 47 steel slivers just sitting there. But there were about 120 iron slivers and we've not even remotely gone through all of the worn iron and steel items that still remain and require to be smelted. We've been sitting on this huge amount of steel and iron for so long and just not using it because the only sliver production was at the very bottom of this. So what I've done is I've specifically told them Make steel bars out of ore as a pri uh, sorry, silver bars out of ore as a priority because we don't have much of that, and that's actually hopefully going to bring us in some more migrants. But then make steel bars out of slivers, then steel bars out of steel, uh, the actual uh, two iron bars, then iron bars out of slivers, then iron bars out of ore. So hopefully that is going to drastically speed up our ability to make armor. If you know I hadn't suspended that in order that we could make beds. Uh, one day, one day we will actually have these things made. What are you building up there at the moment? Are uh, you probably building... Hmm. I'm not sure, actually. It looked like there was a birch plank there, but uh, I'm not sure what you would have needed a birch plank for. Nevertheless, I need to clean that floor. But hopefully we will actually get to having those mattresses sooner rather than later. I have passed a fair bit of time. We are on the eighth day of spring. We are over halfway through spring as it happens. And let me just clean this floor in here. I don't like these uh, random clippings and seeds all over the place. We're doing a good job so far in trying to combat that. Now, have they done all of the... Yes, they have. Fantastic. Let's uh, get those built. So we want furniture, torches. Now these will be proper standing torches so that they can spread their light around a bit better. There we go. And once all of those are built, we'll take the stairs away. Fantastic. Now, one thing I'm a little concerned of is... Have I built that there prematurely? I think I may have. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to deconstruct those. I'm also going to have them replace these floors with more soil. Just to make sure that they actually do um, propagate the grass to them. There we go. This one I will probably do as well, and these ones actually. Goodness gracious me. So much work! Right, we can deconstruct this. They are, I hate that. I really, really dislike that. The fact that if you're on the wrong level, it'll place it in the wrong place. Ooh. Couldn't find part. That was probably trying to deconstruct the stairs, honestly. So uh, let's deconstruct these. There we go. 
This one hasn't been made yet, so we'll wait for that. There we are. Now then. It is going to night time. That isn't so good. But as you can see, plenty of light outside, so I should see any invasions incoming. What are you doing? Where are you going? Oh, it's a merchant. I'm constantly on the watch for people going out to collect dirt at the moment, because they are trying to sneak, sneak out there every time I turn my eyes away. We are still mining out all of the copper down here. It's a slow pro uh, process. Mainly because I'm making it a slow process by uh, mining in that particular way, but... Ah, well. Down here, we are continuing to dig down. I'm not sure what level I'm going to stop at. What level are we on right now? Depth 6. I think I'm going to dig down to depth 10 and then pause the mining at that point. And then we'll uh, start focusing on some other things. Have I replaced that? No, I have not. Let's replace that floor. With a block floor, of course. Basalt blocks, as always. There we go, that will be done quickly. But everything in the fort is progressing, just uh, not quite as fast as I would like. If uh, truth be told, specifically you guys. Maybe I should make another one. No, I don't think I've got the manpower to make use of a, another workshop, even if I had it. But uh, we can clean these floors at the very least. But yes, it is the waiting game at the moment, I am afraid. So I think I'm going to pause the recording here. And I'm going to continue letting time pass, hopefully get these beds up and made as soon as possible, and then resume making more armor. Specifically, making steel, now that we'll probably have a stockpile of steel at that time. But I do hope that you've enjoyed this episode, as always, and I do hope you will be joining us for the next. But until then, and as always, to take care.